three potential environmental catastrophes, all operating on a global scale, have recently been uncovered. Ozone layer depletion, greenhouse warming, and nuclear winter. All three discoveries, it turns out, have strong ties to the exploration of the planets. 1. It was disturbing to find that an inert material with all sorts of practical applications, it serves as the working fluid in refrigerators and air conditioners, as uh, aerosol propellant for deodorants and other products, as lightweight foamy packaging for fast foods, and as a cleaning agent in microelectronics, to name only a few, that such a material can pose a danger to life on Earth. Who would have figured? The molecules in question are called chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs. Chemically, they're extremely inert, which means they're invulnerable until they find themselves up in the ozone layer, where they're broken apart by ultraviolet light from the sun. The chlorine atoms, thus liberated, attack and break down the protective ozone, letting more ultraviolet light reach the ground. This increased ultraviolet intensity ushers in a ghastly procession of potential consequences, involving not just skin cancer and cataracts, but weakening of the human immune system, and, most dangerous of all, possible harm to agriculture and to photosynthetic organisms that are at the base of the food chain on which most life on Earth depends. Now, who discovered that CFCs posed a threat to the ozone layer? Was it the principal manufacturer, the DuPont Corporation, exercising corporate responsibility? Was it the Environmental Protection Agency protecting us? Was it the Department of Defense defending us? No. It was two ivory tower, white-coated university scientists working on something else, Sherwood Rowland and Mario Molina of the University of California, Irvine, not even an Ivy League university. No one instructed them to look for dangers to the environment. They were pursuing fundamental research. They were scientists following their own interests.
Nuclear winter is the predicted darkening and cooling of the Earth, mainly from fine smoke particles injected into the atmosphere from the burning of cities and petroleum facilities that is predicted to follow a global thermonuclear war. A vigorous scientific debate ensued on just how serious nuclear winter might be. The various opinions have now converged. All three-dimensional general circulation computer models predict that the global temperatures resulting from a worldwide thermonuclear war would be colder than those in the Pleistocene ice ages. The implications for our planetary civilization, especially through the collapse of agriculture, are very dire. It is a consequence of nuclear war that was somehow overlooked by the civil and military authorities of the United States, the Soviet Union, Britain, France, and China, when they decided to accumulate well over 60,000 nuclear weapons. Although it's hard to be certain about such things, a case can be made that nuclear winter played a constructive role, there were other causes, of course, in convincing the nuclear-armed nations, especially the Soviet Union, of the futility of nuclear war. Nuclear winter was first calculated and named in 1982-83, by a group of five scientists to which I'm proud to belong. This team was given the acronym TAPS, T-T-A-P-S, for Richard P. Turco, Owen B. Toon, Thomas Ackerman, James Pollock, and myself. Of the five TAPS scientists, two were planetary scientists, and the other three had published many papers in planetary science. The earliest intimation of nuclear winter came during that same Mariner 9 mission to Mars, when there was a global dust storm and we were unable to see the surface of the planet. The infrared spectrometer on the spacecraft found the high atmosphere to be warmer and the surface colder than they ought to have been. Jim Pollock and I sat down and tried to calculate how that could come about. Over the subsequent 12 years, this line of inquiry led from dust storms on Mars to volcanic aerosols on Earth to the possible extinction of the dinosaurs by impact dust to nuclear winter. You never know where science will take you. Planetary science fosters a broad, interdisciplinary point of view that proves enormously helpful in discovering and attempting to diffuse these looming environmental catastrophes. When you cut your teeth on other worlds, you gain a perspective about the fragility of planetary environments, and about what other quite different environments are possible. There may well be potential global catastrophes still to be uncovered. If there are, I bet planetary scientists will play a central role in understanding them.